Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Avorian episode 45. I'm an Igneous and today, after much humming and hawing, we're back on track. Uh, making good progress, but not fast progress. It's important to note that things uh, are not moving as fast as I sort of expected that they would at this point, but they are moving. So in the last episode, we kind of spent basically the entire episode, uh, give or take, on this front section of the elliptical piece that's going around the back part of the main hull. And I wanted to get everything sort of lined up with the proper slope and following the appropriate curves and doing all of those things, which we did, but we didn't get all the way through the process. So I decided that I would show uh, the last sort of parts of the this sort of area getting things finished off. I'm not going to show you the back side because it's exactly what we did on the front side, just reversed upside down, flipped upside down. So we can basically get a pretty good idea of what's involved in this entire process. You can see we're just kind of filling in some more of the geometry with the blocks that we have. And then, of course, as we've been talking about the last few episodes, there's that one particular shape that we can't produce that we can't produce. So I'm not going to stress out over it. I'm not going to try and figure out some radical scheme to go without but still produce the outcome that I would prefer, which is this nice seamless um, sort of finish. It is what it is. And I think it's um, still pretty good, all things considered. When we're talking about this kind of geometry, the curves and the slopes and the intersecting and all the other stuff, uh, perfection, I think, is a, a lofty goal um, that... <laughs> Ironically, even if we did have that specific block, uh, we, we still wouldn't be able to get perfection because uh, we're talking about a curve and the curves are imperfect. The geometry uh, doesn't support uh, anything that would allow us to make perfect curves, especially beyond a certain size. Um, we get closer and closer to the idea of a perfect curve until you look up close and then you realize even at a very large sort of curved shape, it's still made up of lines. They're just very small lines and a very large shape. So it becomes a little bit easier to hide the fact that you don't have um, the geometry. One of the things that I had been thinking about specifically regarding this part of the ship is that I, I wanted something functional attached to it. And I didn't necessarily want it to be um, engines but I was also aware of the fact that we do have to get a certain amount of maneuverability uh, out of this ship in order to justify um, saying that part of the goal with this ship was to experiment with different um, directions of maneuverability, pitch, yaw, roll, all those other things. Roll, I've never really seemed to have a problem getting to the extent that I feel comfortable that the ship is rolling fast enough. And I think it's because I largely don't care about how fast the ship rolls. What I tend to care about is the, the pitch and the yaw because those determine how quickly you can turn around. So if you're traveling in a direction and you want to spin the ship around 180 degrees and use your engines as sort of brake thrusters, your ability to do that quickly and easily is going to be a function of your pitch and or yaw. So those are sort of the things that I'm focusing on and that's why I'm focusing on them. But uh, we're, we're not necessarily yet in a position where I can determine exactly where all of these thrusters might go because there's things that are not necessarily um, decided in terms of the, the finished part of the hull. Now this part that you're looking at here uh, was one of the things that I've been talking about as one of the additional structural, key structural elements that I've been wanting to add that's been on my mind for some time and we're just now getting to the point where I started to add it. And the part that you're seeing me build now is the fourth iteration on this shape. I did three previous attempts at creating the profile for this specific shape before I arrived at this one and ultimately decided um, after all the tweaking and adjusting was done, that this is the one that I would be sticking with. And the whole idea is strictly to add a measure of visual interest. <laughs> you can see for a brief time, I wanted it to curve down and then sort of start curving back the other way, not up, 
but just kind of going from a, a you know what looks like about a 45 degree angle curving back up to a softer angle and then tapering off to a point and then I realized that that just wasn't really going to look very good with the the rest of the things that are on the ship. If I had done something similar with those pieces that are sticking out to the side of the ship, I think it would have been uh, a more viable thing. And you can see here, I'm still trying to get away with it. I'm still going with a softer curve this time, but we're still backing away from a more aggressive curve. And then the idea is we have the softer curve and then it would taper off. And you could, the, the interesting thing is I'm to the point now where with this specific build that it takes so long for those little red checkered sections from blocks that I've deleted to disappear that you can actually see uh, the parts that you've removed to redo an area and then be able to compare them to the parts that you place in their place for the, the new idea, the new iteration after you've decided, no, I don't like that, I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna do something else. You can see here, you can see the silhouette of the blocks that I just deleted as we kind of work our way through this new shape, this new attempt to get this particular section of the ship not done. Now in terms of um, functionality, this piece here specifically, along with the ones that we've got off the sides, we could put some directional thrusters in here and probably get some pretty good performance uh, in the roll category because they're sticking out from the center of mass on the ship. And that would be my first place where I would at least experiment with the directional thrusters to see what we could get in terms of the roll. Because, like I say, I, I tend not to care too much about roll, which is not to say that it's unimportant. It's just that it's not one of my focuses. There's many things that I could be focusing my attention on that are all important. But ultimately, I will choose to focus on some more than others. And in this case, um, I understand that if I wanted to focus on roll, there would be places on the ship where I could probably get away with putting uh, directional thrusters that would perform well for providing that uh, without having to fuss too much about it. Um, the thing is, anything that I put in these sections off to the side is almost guaranteed to be either fully exposed or to have only a very thin layer of armor over it just because I can't really add too much bulk and the outer edges of these structural elements without making them look kind of weird. So I have to be a little bit careful, but the option is there. Um, it's just one of those things where I'm, I'm kind of looking in other directions for stuff that I should be focusing on. But at the same time, keeping in the back of my mind that there, there are certain things that I should be prepared to deal with whether I want to or not. This is about as close as I get to what I uh, had in mind for the shape of this particular section of the ship. And I'll tell you, now that we're nearly complete, we're just basically going to follow this curve back down until it meets up with the main hull. Uh, I, I may not even keep this. I know, all this, all this trouble making you watch me build it, and I already know in the back of my mind that I may not even keep it. And the reason is because I think it might be a bit much. Um, the, the part that says keep it, the, the part of me that says keep it is the part that's saying they, they kind of lend the the suggestion in a very sort of oblique arbitrary way of fangs the way that they're shaped um, the way that they curve they they do kind of lend that idea it puts the idea in your head of fangs even though the positioning relative to the rest of the hull doesn't necessarily make sense for that specific context you still get that impression in the back of your mind uh which i think is makes it uh, worthwhile to at least consider having these particular elements on the ship and we've already got two of them sticking out to the side and I feel that they're successful where they are the one on top necessarily doesn't I, I don't think it needs to be there and I'd also had the idea for another one on the bottom the, the same idea the same sort of profile I don't think it needs to be there either and I don't really think that it's necessarily the only way that I could use that space. I think that there are other things that I could do with that space that would be uh, a little bit different, maybe even a little bit off theme if we're talking about it in that context in the sense that, you know, if it's um, supposed to be a snake-like theme, 
et cetera, et cetera. Maybe the other you know ideas that I have about it wouldn't be the best. But at the same time, just because it's themed in a certain way based on the name and the way things just sort of came together doesn't mean that everything has to fit with that. We can do basically whatever we want. Uh, and we, I don't necessarily, um, I don't feel the compulsion to defend it. Like I'll discuss it. But if it came down to a case of someone saying, why did you do it that way? Why didn't you do it this way? Blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Because <laughs> that's what I did. And, uh, and I'm okay with it. You know, creative license and all those other things. Uh, the significance of which is lost on people who, who don't en engage in creative activities, I guess would be a way of saying it. This is why I promote as much as I can creativity and doing your own thing and being, you know, forgiving of yourself when things don't necessarily match what you had in mind because you're still being creative. You're still expressing something that didn't exist in the world until you decided to try and make it, which is, I think, very, very cool. And I think when people are creative and when they recognize the, the vulnerability in the creative sort of process, that's when uh, there, there's a little bit more understanding. There are fewer questions. Why did you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? because this is what I chose to do. That's just kind of the thing. Sorry, I, I was reading a bunch of stuff on some movies that I'd watched recently, and apparently the movies didn't do so well at the box office. We're not talking about anything in the last few months, a little bit farther back. And they didn't do so well, and the reason why is because the community that was most interested in watching the, the movie when it first came out had already decided what the movie should have said. They'd, they'd already decided what the story should be, and they never gave it a chance. So naturally, my mind follows this vein that, you know, if, if these people had actually created anything of their own at any point and had it criticized because they didn't make what someone else wanted, they'd know better than to criticize something for not making it what someone else wanted. <laughs> that mini rant uh, is done. As you can see, directional thrusters going in these little sections that we left open in the outer perimeter of the ellipse, this particular shape. And then closing it up with the um, glowing blocks, in this case, just a very plain glowing slope to match the slope of the ellipse, uh, doing it front and back. So for all practical intents and purposes, there's no armor in the front or back of these directional thrusters. It's just these glowing things that'll basically dissolve at the first sign of trouble. But I really like the look. I think that the position of them is great. I like the way that they kind of accent what's going on without necessarily dominating. And what I found in the process of filling all of this in and getting all of these directional thrusters into place is that we've already got for some reasonable numbers in terms of the actual function, the, the specific numbers, the, the pitch and the yaw of the ship, even though we don't have the necessary mechanics on board and we haven't finished filling out the rest of the ship in terms of the directional thrusters that we're going to have. So I think a lot of it is to do with the fact that Trinium is apparently uh, one of the lightest, if not the lightest materials that we have access to for building. That certainly would help. But what's really encouraging is that I don't really, even though I've got some decisions to make about that top element that we did the profile for in this episode and whatever we're gonna do on the bottom, Regardless of whether I keep what I've got and follow that theme on the underside or switch it up for some of the other ideas that I have floating around in my head, we're not going to be adding enough mass to significantly detract from the existing performance numbers for the ship. So we're in good shape, I think, as far as all of that goes. I noticed in this spot um, specifically that this little bit that's kind of sticking down away from the, the actual main area of the ellipse, wasn't following the slope. It was just going straight down. So you'll see, I'll go around, highlight it, and then we have to remove basically this bottom area and redo it so that it follows the slope the, the way that it's supposed to, that everything lines up the way that I originally wanted it to do. And then all the little temporary blocks that I have to place in order to get that to work. But it, it wasn't bad. It, it just took a few minutes. Um, it was a very minor sort of thing. I didn't have to remove a lot and it wasn't th the worst things when it comes to making changes that you didn't expect to have to make is when they're 
kind of complicated to the extent that it gets confusing, those are the ones that are kind of like you, you dread approaching them. But in this case, very simple, straightforward. Just pull things apart to um, make sure that you have room to redo things the way they're supposed to be and then redo them. And then Bob's your uncle will be able to fit in a few more um, chunks of directional thrusters, finish filling in the lights, and we're in good shape. So the next episode, we're going to make the decision one way or the other what we're going to do with those top and bottom sections of the ship, whether we keep what we've got and do the same thing underneath, or whether we redo it to something else. I'm thinking we're going to redo it. And whatever we do decide to do, we're going to do in the next episode. And then that will be the end of the main structural sort of work that we have to do. Everything after that will just be adding equipment, doing a little bit of final refinements, adding, you know, details to make things look a little bit more interesting. But structurally, the ship will be done. So if you want to be notified about the next and future episodes in this and other series, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.